Ryan Matt Borden here, aka Loopline. In this video, I'm going to cover the new Moz Premium plugin that is new here in the fourth quarter of 2020. And if you don't have it, you can go to Premium Plugins, Show Available Plugins, and then the Moz plugin is here. It talks about it down here. Then you'll be able to purchase it. After you purchase it, they activate all purchases manually within 12 hours. If you're buying it with a different email address, then your license is under the email support uh, or use the contact form on scrapebox.com and let them know the account you're buying it from and the account that you want it associated with so they can get that linked up for you. After they get it activated, you're going to have to restart Scrapebox and then you're just going to come back to the same menu, show available plugins, and then click the Moz plugin and you can install it. And if there were an update, of course, you would update it from the same spot right here. And you could uninstall it if you ever had a problem and then reinstall it. And so once you have it installed, you can go to Premium Plugins and then go to the Moz plugin and launch it. And then I've got some URLs here I'm just going to paste in here. I just scraped them up with the word car, just sample URLs here to work with. And so what the Moz plugin does is it's you may have used the page authority add-on which is under the add-ons menu right here in Scrapebox. And um, it's a free add-on that comes with Scrapebox. It works with Moz as well. And it gives you a few metrics from Moz with a either free or paid Moz API key. Now the Moz plugin here is kind of like that um, souped up. And so you can see under Moz in just a quick view here that there's tons of metrics you can get and um, it gives you some explanations so you can enable and disable and that sort of thing. So let's kind of walk through this. Pretty basic. Um, under file you get the option to load uh, URLs from a file from clipboard cloud storage or from Scrapebox. These same buttons right here you'll notice as you hover over them they're the same thing. So these are load buttons here. You can load from file. Of course you can quit. And then down here you have the same load option. So I'm just going to grab them from Scrapebox here pull them in. And then um, as I move across here I have accounts and settings and then this lets you check how many rows you consume because Moz gives you a limit. So if it's a paid plan or a free plan they still give you a limit of the total number of rows that you get each month and so this lets you check it conveniently. I will say just a quick note it does run just briefly behind not this but Moz doesn't update live so they update that row count um, every so often. And then you've got to enable or disable the metrics which is the same thing that we just looked at right here and then um, play and start or play and stop rather which is the same as the buttons down here so now we know we've got our buttons here and then loading some URLs so what are we going to do with them? Well, We have to set up an account and so if you have a Moz account that's great if you don't have one go over here to help and then create a free app ID and secret key when you click on this, it's going to take you to whatever the current link is on the Moz page where you can create an API key. Um, at the moment of this video, if you click on it, it, Moz says, hey, you have to have an account in order to get an API key. Do you want to make one? It's free. So you go ahead and you create a free API key account or create a free Moz account rather and then you can get the API key. If you can't figure it out, just come back and click on this link again. and It'll take you right back there where you can get the API key. And so once you have your API key and your secret key, you're going to go ahead and put them in under Moz Accounts and Settings. So mine here, you can put more than one. As you can see, it says enter your Moz ID and secrets in the format of ID and then secret key. Now this little symbol in the middle is the pipe key. On most keyboards, at least on a North American keyboard, it is the symbol above the enter key if you hold down shift. And so... Um, there's other names for it, but it's most commonly called the pipe key. So you just put it in, and it's just a format of here. Let's see if we can pull this up and um, make this so you'd see. So let's say my Moz ID is like Moz seventh, uh, whatever, right? And then let's say my password is password, right? So if I wanted to make this Moz format it looks like this and I'm spending a moment on it because people it's been this way for like seven years or six years or however long it's been in there but people still get confused and ask questions so it looks like this if the first part was my Moz ID and the second part was my secret key it would look like that in that format no spaces nothing just your ID pipe key and then your secret key and so that's how that works and once we have that in, uh, there's the option here. If you're using a paid account, you want to place a check mark in this box. 
uncheck it for free account so by default it comes unchecked because it's assuming you're using a free account if you have a paid account go ahead and place a check mark in that box Moz does require a delay of 10 seconds per batch query for free accounts and so the delay here is set at 10 by default you could make it higher than 10 if you wanted to um, but 10 is where Moz wants it and then for paid accounts here you don't necessarily need a delay and then you can use only the first account and or you can uncheck it to switch accounts so let's say I put in like five accounts here and I only wanted to use the first one because the first one was like a paid account and the other ones are free accounts well I could put this in and it would use just the first account if I uncheck this then it's going to rotate and do one request in this account one request on number two one on number three and so on um, it's kind of mute since I only have one account loaded in here and then the number of URLs per Moz request so Moz allows up to 50 uh, per a batch request that kind of puts 50 URLs in one query and then sends it off to Moz and gets the metrics. You can put less than 50. Um, I'm not sure why you would want to put less than 50 unless maybe you had some custom API plan where they limited you um, or you wanted to do it for some reason, but nonetheless you can control that. Um, all of these are basically default settings and so once you have your Moz ID entered in there, um, then we can enable or disable Moz metrics. Now I'm not going to go through every single one of these. You can go on Moz website and check out what all these really mean. There's some descriptions here like page authority, a score from 1 to 100 represented the likelihood that the page is going to rank in search engines. So you can go to Moz and you can research all these metrics and you can decide if you don't want them. I can tell you that it doesn't matter if you have them all checked or if you have only three checked, or if you have 13 of them checked, it doesn't really matter. When Scrapebox sends the query to Moz, um, it's going to count as the same amount of usage. So if you check one or all of these or half of them and Scrapebox sends the query, it's still going to use up the same amount of total rows from your Moz API account. And so basically, check the ones you want or leave them all checked. Um, if you like, you can do all or none here. You can invert your selection, so I can do this, and then you know just invert it so only that one's done, that sort of thing. And so choose your metrics, and I'm going to do all, and I'm going to close out of this. We have our URLs, and we pretty much talked about everything um, except for checking how many rows we've consumed. And let's just do that right quick. If we click on that, and we click Start, Moz works off of rows. And so I've used 84 rows this month period and basically um, you get X number like I said if you bought a 10,000 plan this will give you an idea of how many rows you've used which is super handy because sometimes you're running along and you don't know where you're at and you don't want to go over and so well it won't let you go over but you might want to save them for something else that you need more and so you can get a better handle on where you're at with this and if you've used up all the ones on a free account, you know, maybe you need to go buy an account or add another free account, etc. So I've got all these URLs loaded in here. Now it's important to note, if I click on just one of these, like this one right here, and hit start, it'll just check that one row. Whereas if I click on like this and hit start, it's just going to check those. Okay. Now if I don't have any highlighted in blue and I click start, it's going to check everything. And you can see it did 50 there, and now it's pausing for the 10 seconds. That is that we have in the settings that Moz requires for a free account, and this is a free account, and then it does the rest of them. So I had 81 URLs here, and we can see they have all of them. It, across the top you can note the different metrics that we saw when we were loading them, and you can scroll right and you can see all these metrics all the way over here. Now once we're all done here, of course, then we have the option to export, and we have some different ones here. Make sure we can see this on the video. Um, we have save all entries to file. We have save selected entries to file. So all is obviously all. I can highlight these and then save only the selected. Maybe I wanted to sort them um, and only do the ones that are like a high page authority, right? So page authority 78 to 60 or whatever. And I can export those. Um, and then I can save all entries as Excel. Now that would obviously put them in Excel like spreadsheet and then save the selected again so these aren't going to be a spreadsheet these are going to be a spreadsheet and then I can save them all as an HTML file like if I wanted to post this up uh, either on my website or as a presentation or 
on a private internal server, whatever you want to do, you can save all this data as HTML and then go to town with it. I'm going to save it as a file real quick and we can look at it and then we'll look at it in Excel here. So I'll pause the video while I do all that and get the files opened up here to save you a moment of viewing time. All right. So I've got all the files exported, which you can see here. Uh, I went ahead and just saved everything because we know what it's going to look like if we save um, just a selected portion. It'll just be a smaller amount. So the first option we had was save all entries to file. This is a text file. You can see text format. And um, it's basically a CSV. It has everything in comma separated value. You could rename it as a CSV and it would work just fine, um, you know, just renaming it and um, we would be good to go and then so you can do whatever you want with that it's not very uh, human friendly which is why we have Excel which is great uh, and we have everything here we can see the URL and the status and then the page authority and the all the metrics across the way and we can scroll right here and see them and then you know I'm just gonna jump to the end so they're all there obviously we're all the way down to AV so quite a lot of um, options there metrics and then we have the HTML option um, which I'm going to open in the internal browser here. Again, same thing. It's just organized in a nice web page. We can go across here and see if we can't make everyone dizzy. And um, there it all is. And so there's all the metrics and that sort of thing. So three file formats for export, um, simple and easy. Something that I didn't cover as well is a really nice right-click menu. Um, we can remove selected entries. So if I want to get rid of this carid.com here, I can just get rid of that. So if you want to do some sorting, you could. Of course, these are clickable up here. And then, uh, you know, get rid of ones. Like, I don't know if you wanted to get rid of everything, like we said before, below the 60 mark. Then we could uh, highlight those, I suppose, and remove them. And so then we're just left with, oh, we get rid of that. Uh, well, with all of this, and then we could just export all. Uh, and so then we could maybe sort by page authority, and then maybe we wanted to sort next by domain authority and get the highest. Uh, and go from there. And so that's a nice way if you have multiple metrics you want to sort by in a row. You can do that and then whittle it down. You can also select all. You can deselect all. Pretty basic. We have the load options which we talked about. Um, and I'll mention cloud storage here in a moment. I'll show you that. Uh, but file clipboard and scrape box is pretty basic. And then we have all the export options as well which is the same as here. So a lot of things you can do it several ways like we can load things here or here or here or here and we can export here in the right click menu or export down here. We can exit right here. We can exit with the X. You get the point. And so the thing I didn't cover I guess then is the cloud storage which is if you click load URLs from cloud storage it'll bring up this nice thing and the built-in ones are Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive, the big players. Um, pretty basic and I don't have anything set up here because I don't have any files in cloud storage but it, it works just like if you were using the cloud storage option in Scrapebox. So if you have that set up um, from the cloud storage here then you know it's the same concept you put it in here and you can pull in your files directly rather than having them on my local hard drive um, I personally like them on the local hard drive you do whatever works for you and so that is kinda of the basics of the Moz add-on it really just gives you a convenient way to get all of these massive amount of metrics that you going across here um, really great export formats and then a status checker so we can see the URLs and rows that are used and um, now we can see it went up to 199 so it, it updates a little slow um, but we started with that 84 and then monkeyed around and so really that's the Moz plugin in a nutshell gives you a massive amount of metrics that you can use to filter URLs for all sorts of purposes and um, gives you really convenient checking of your rows and fantastic export formats all in an easy to use package and that is the Moz plugin Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.